All right, Pete Gerlach again. This is part two of two videos whose point is to offer you some concrete, specific suggestions about improving your self-respect or self-esteem or pride, non-egotistical pride. If you haven't yet watched part one, please follow the link, do that, and come back. This video proposes nine specific steps you can take to improve your self-respect. I guarantee you will find this video unique. Many other videos suggest ways of improving your self-respect. They all lack one key ingredient. What is that? What I'm about to tell you comes from 19 years of practicing professional internal family systems therapy. That will mean nothing to you unless you have studied lesson one in the nonprofit Break the Cycle website. Here are the nine specific steps you can follow if you want to improve your self-esteem. The first obvious step is to be aware that your self-esteem, self-respect, is low. You have to acknowledge that consciously and intentionally. Then you have to commit to improving it. You also have to believe you can. There are several reasons why that makes sense, but it's difficult to do. After you do these things, or as you, as you attempt to do them, the first crucial step, which you will not find in any other video, I bet, is to use the information in Lesson 1 of the Break the Cycle website to determine who is running your life. If you have low self-esteem, the odds are very high you have been dominated all your life by a well-intentioned false self. To gain self-respect and keep it, you have to find out who are the sub-selves that are running your personality, dominating your personality, making your decisions, controlling your body and your thoughts. Who are they? And then do something called inner family therapy, which you can do alone or with skilled help, to make some changes to parts of your personality. What parts? I propose that low self-esteem comes from a group of normal, underline normal, subcells that people develop from a, tra a traumatic childhood. One of the most prominent subcells can be called a shamed inner child. Shame is the feeling of self-hatred, self-dislike, feeling uh, clumsy, stupid, dumb, ugly, uh, unlovable. That's the sense of shame. It's different than guilt, by the way. It feels similar, but it's different. Most of us with low self-esteem have a one or more active shamed inner children. They're living in the past against all logic. If you use internal family systems therapy, you can identify this child, bond with it, meaning your true self, your adult and your nurturer, some selves. Lesson one will show you what these are. Meet this inner child, bring her or him into the present, into a safe environment, and start to retrain this child and show her or him what you were taught about us is wrong. In addition to working with the inner child, you need to work with several other of your guardian subcells. They're diligent, they work 24-7 to protect your inner kids, often to protect your shamed child. One of them is your inner critic. After you become an adult and presumably leave home, and the source of external criticism diminishes or goes away, Magically, inner voices pick up where the outside voices left off, and we start criticizing ourselves. That was stupid. That was dumb. Why didn't you do it this way? Stupid, bad job. Boo, mistake, mistake. Where does that voice come from? It comes from a ceaselessly active 
normal subself called the inner critic. If you start to do compassionate, firm job retraining for your inner critic using inner family therapy, you can convert the ceaseless inner criticism to coaching and praise. What a concept. Similarly, you can use inner family therapy to work with another guardian subself that enhances our shame. This one can be called the perfectionist. Well, you do a pretty good job, but it wasn't good enough. You could have done a whole lot better. You've got to work with your perfectionist to do an attitude adjustment and tone him or her down and, and cause this part to believe it's safe to do that. A fourth sub-self that you need to work with in order to reduce low self-esteem or raise it to high self-esteem is your people pleaser. Many of us were taught as kids, in order to feel good about ourselves, we have to please our friends. We have to please our adults. We have to do what they think is right, what they like, rather than doing what we think is right. If we do what we think is right, we're branded critically as selfish. You need to identify, bond with, and work with your people pleaser to adjust, not eliminate him or her, but tone her down and say, it's good to help other people and appreciate their respect. And we do not have to depend on other people for our own sense of worth. So, the second step to improve your self-respect is to use internal family systems therapy, which you'll learn how to do in lesson one of my free website, adjust your personality some cells, and that will, in large measure, allow your shame to diminish, your guilt to diminish, your anxiety to diminish, your serenity to improve, and your self-respect and even self-love to improve over time. I've seen this happen with many people. I've experienced it myself. This will probably evoke your inner skeptic saying, oh, this sounds too good to be true. Uh, that's a normal reaction. You won't know unless you try it. Study lesson one. As you do that, here are several other things you can do to raise your self-esteem. First, make a specific concrete list of the traits in any person and in you that cause you to respect yourself or them. Typical traits are honesty, courage, resilience, a sense of humor, empathy, thoughtfulness, creativeness, creativity, strength, spirituality, determination. Um, list the criteria in you. Think of the people you respect the most. Think of the reasons why you respect them. Accumulate a list of traits that merit respect and then start applying those traits to yourself. Okay? Every day, refer to that list and as you face inevitable small and large decisions, refer to your criteria for self-respect and say, which of these criteria apply here. How am I going to earn my self-respect? How should I decide what to do? This takes practice and patience. It works. Okay. <clears throat> Another very powerful thing you can do to enhance your self-respect, study lesson two on my website, improve the effectiveness of your communication. Communication is about getting your needs met. The more, the more effective you are at communicating and getting your needs met and helping others to do the same, the more you will respect yourself. Effective communication is a core skill and requisite for self-respect. It's something you can improve intentionally. Never thought about doing that? You can start after you stop looking at this video improve the effectiveness of your communication over time. 
Another option you have, intentionally identify the people in your life that for whatever reason tend to shame you. They criticize you, they blame you, they disparage you, they minimize you, they're skeptical or doubtful. Identify those people. Don't criticize them. Don't blame them. They have their own burdens. They're not bad people. They're probably insecure, afraid, and shame-based themselves and in denial of that. Identify them and draw an invisible boundary between yourself and them, an invisible shield, and let their commentary about you bounce off. If you work with your subselves, you can retrain your subselves to say, that's their opinion, they are mistaken, we don't need to take in as truth what they say about us. That's particularly true about critical parents, siblings, and lovers. Separate yourself from people who shame you and still respect them and feel compassion for them. Another thing you can do, you see your mistakes, which are inevitable. Your perfectionist will point them out. Your adult will note them. Gee, I could have done that better. Gee, that was wrong. See your mistakes as opportunities to learn rather than failures. Your inner critic is used to saying, you're a loser, you're a failure. After you retrain your inner critic, you can get him or her to say, well, that didn't work so well. Next time, here's how we ought to do it. See failures as opportunities. That's called reframing. Another thing that often promotes shame is your perfectionist uh, and your critic will compare you ceaselessly to other people. Well, she really knows how to bake a cake. He really knows how to garden or uh, balance his checkbook or fly an airplane or whatever. Comparing yourself to others is a lose-lose option. There are always people who have talents that are greater than yours. Uh, there are all those people who don't have talents as good as yours. Follow the advice of the man who wrote Zen and the Game of Inner Tennis. Be the best you can be. Stop comparing yourself to others. Okay? Another option you have is to journal as the days go by and or every night. Pause as you're going to sleep and review. What do I like about the way I handled myself today? Even small things. I smiled at so and so. I said thank you. I acknowledged someone's strength. I didn't fault myself. I didn't criticize myself. I didn't apologize the way I usually do. Take stock of the things that you like about what you do and accumulate, accumulate them, affirm them, appreciate them. If you do that often enough, they'll stick. The final point I want to offer you here, ask for feedback. Ask how people perceive you, without shame, without guilt, without embarrassment. See how they think you think of yourself. Learn from them. This is a quick review of nine specific things you can choose to do over time to raise your self-respect and reduce the inner wound of shame. Review this video as often as you need to. Write it down. There's a companion article on the website that gives the same suggestions with more detail. So review part one of this video. Keep this video in front of you periodically. Review the article. Free your true self to be all you can be. Enjoy the results. Thanks for watching.